Hello and welcome to today's webinar, Improving Your Organization's Collaborative and Case-Centric Processes with Office 365. I'm Amanda Goff from AIM, and AIM is your host and producer of today's event. With us today are Teresa Rezik from AIM and Alan McMillan from RepStore. RepStore is the underwriter of today's webinar. We thank them for their support and thank you for taking time to join us today. Before we get started, let me share a few pointers for viewing today's webinar. By joining our webinars live, you can customize your own viewing experience. Feel free to open, close, or resize the different windows. Across the bottom of your screen is the list of all the widgets available to you. Group chat is one of them. Open this by clicking on the group chat icon that's along the bottom. With this, you'll be able to text chat with each other and also with a few of us from AIM. And do ask questions to the speakers throughout the hour using the Q&A feature. We will hold them until the end where we should have five to 10 minutes to answer them. You can also use this feature to ask for technical assistance. You can download a PDF of the presentation at any time. Just look to the resources list to the right of the slide area. There are also a few other links in there to help you learn more about today's topic. Just click in here at any time. The resource will open in a new browser tab and you can save and read them after the webinar. At the end of this webinar, a brief survey will open in your browser and it's also in the widgets below the slide area. We'd appreciate if you take a few moments to offer your feedback and to suggest other topics for us to cover. This webinar is being recorded and will be posted to aim.org's resources webinars page in a few days. Now to introduce today's speakers. Teresa Rezik is Director, Market Intelligence and Content Services at AIM. She has worked in information management for 20 years, has her MBA, CIP, and is well-versed in ECM, ERM, and BPM. As a Project and Program Director at AIM, Teresa has held positions as editor, writer, host, and producer, working with the supplier community and subject matter experts to produce over 350 educational webinars for AIM's international audience. Alan McMillan is a 20-year veteran, 25-year veteran of the IT industry, following a period working in engineering at Queen's University Belfast and Siemens in Munich. His background in ECM technologies began back in the 1990s when he co-founded an email management specialist, now part of Oracle. Alan is now CEO of RepStore, whose mission is to enable collaboration and compliance and drive productivity for the outlook-centric workforce in large enterprises. Now I'll turn this over to Teresa to begin our discussion today. Thanks, Mandy. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Um, Al and I are going to be talking a, a bit about bringing together your email and document management systems, and we'll look at the importance of user adoption for these in-house systems and for managing your processes in those systems. And then we'll talk a bit about how all this can come together with case management, especially within the SharePoint and Office 365 environment. There is a recognized need for businesses to keep unstructured content and information, including email, within the approved corporate systems of record to minimize risk and maximize the value of business information. Recent research conducted by AIM shows that while businesses are increasing the number of content systems across the enterprise, they're not working to their full potential. And as 54% of critical business content is reported to be retained outside of those systems. People are using a variety of tools to create their content, and they're already using a variety of collaborative approaches, including email. Yet, we know that information contained within emails is not the most effective place to store, find, and organize such info, especially case-sensitive information. Yet, 52% of organizations report email use for their review and approval processes, likely with attachments that are not secure and not easily replicated. And again, while this is, is in email form, the information remains hidden, inaccessible by others who could benefit from it, and essentially, it's lost to the organization as a whole. In 
in these times when businesses are moving to digitally transform their organizations to improve their engagement, their user engagement, and enhance the customer experience, fewer than one in five foresee being near where they really want to be come 2020. There is an opportunity right now to look at the most frequently used and most basic of systems, email and document management, as a starting point in your organization's digital transformation. If nothing more than to eliminate email silos and bring that information into the corporate information management ecosystem for reasons of better management, accessibility, and control. Alan, what are your thoughts on why this is? Uh, hi, Teresa. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, I think the the interesting thing with email is that you know it is still you know the the, the only really ubiquitous way for organizations to, to, to work together. Um, despite the, the sort of, I guess, the, the real push by a lot of organizations to go to collaborative spaces and to do other things, in the end of the day, people feel comfortable with sending out emails with attached documents and you know, for review and all sorts of other things to make, to make sure that they, they know they've got that bit of information to the individual who needs to respond. And I think as well as sort of it being just them feeling comfortable, I think there is, you know, a lack of motivation in, in some parts of, of organizations. You know, large organizations are made up of individuals who, whose motivation, um, you know, varies according to sometimes their position, sometimes the particular job they do. But trying to get somebody to pick up a completely new way of working that is really in their eyes no more effective than sending an email to somebody is, is pretty difficult. Um, and it's a very expensive, heavy change management um, process that, that needs to be constantly, uh, you know, maintained for you know new people joining the organisation. Whereas, you know, email just works for people. Um, so there is a you know a very uh, I guess email is so sticky on these things it is hard to move. And it is about being able to go. I know I sent that to that person at this time. They have it. And, and therefore, I've done I've done my bit of this. I think the bottom bottom line on this is that you know email is really going going nowhere fast. Um, I think it, it, it's you know it's going to be around for a while, maybe even more so in the fact that you know people are now using uh, mobile applications to access their email and mobile clients. That even makes it more sticky. So I think there is a real need to particularly get email and the content that is. That is, you know, uh, find an email, the attachments, and, and and so on, into a place where it can be properly managed, into a system that has proper records management, and even more so, in the way that regulations are are, are popping up around, uh, you know, obviously GDPR is the, the the buzz term right now, but there there are others as well, just general records management as well. So getting that information into a manageable place without really disrupting too much the way that people work and allowing them to get their job done is a really important important piece here. You know, the, the natural place for people to do that, we believe, is within the Outlook client, and certainly what we see is that uh, whenever you do allow people to do that within the Outlook client, they tend to do the right thing. They tend to more so file things that should be filed because they don't then lose connection with that content. So, that, you know, from our perspective, Outlook's a great way, a great place to do this, um, you know, because it's the natural place to work, particularly with email and email source content. You know, there's a whole bunch of different, you know, case management type uh, activities that are that are really, um, you know, it's pretty obvious that, that the best way to to handle these things is within a uh, you know within a um, an Outlook client. You know, things like complaints, where a lot of this stuff gets done by email these days. The phone is horrible for doing this, and people would much rather fire in either an email or a web form or something that gets that type of information to somebody at the other end, and then responding to that becomes much easier from uh, um, from an email client. Um, things like legal document review, you know, it's it's I do this day and daily with all sorts of organizations. Getting legal documents reviewed does tend to end up being a, a an email backwards and forwards because. People at each end don't particularly want to see each other's notes, or they would like to see the other guy's notes, but they don't want uh, them to see their notes. 
and procurement processes where there's a lot of outbound email because it's sort of one one to many type uh, type activities and so on. So there's a whole raft of these different um, email management, uh, document management, you know, bound up together in, in case management opportunities to make these processes better. Um, I think every single organization of any type in the world has one one or more and more likely more of these processes that need to be need to be dealt with. So being able to, to take that and, and deal with it in, in the natural place to do that, I think, uh, allows people to get the information around these processes into a back-end system that is really going to work from a records management perspective and from a compliance perspective. Back to you, Tracy. Oh, thank you there. Um, did you want to talk a little bit more about the trade? Oh, I've, I've missed the slide. Sorry, <laughs> I thought I thought the next slide was yours. So apologies. So yeah, I mean, I think the other thing is with uh, with um, you know within these types of cases, there are a lot of commonalities. You know, they are places where you know they're not particularly suited to being able to create a workspace and work together and those things. It is more about communication. Um, there are also a lot of these types of things. HR disciplinaries. HR type processes are very sensitive and, and need to be secured. And then you know you've got also um, you know cases within big corporates where email is going from individual to individual, and really it's part of a collaborative process. And really you need to have groups of people with access to that content. You know examples like within big professional services companies where uh, you have uh, you know engagement management type things. You have a customer. You have 10 people, 20 people, 30 people within that organization servicing that customer, and there really is a need to get all of that information into one, one place so that all, everybody's aware of how that, uh, that engagement is going. And we see this all the time. We deal with some of the bigger uh, consultancies, the big four consultancies, and they absolutely have this need to bring that information into one place. And a huge amount of that information is, is email specific. Um, and you know, again, audit requirements around these things are uh, are huge. So you know, there, there's all sorts of things in the news around you know particular organisations being audited around processes, around customers, and so on. And this, a lot of this stuff ends up being email specific and needs that audit capability. So getting all that information into a place where you know what it is and what it's relating to has a big impact on the effectiveness that you can have around audit. And also, you can then also start measuring how you're actually dealing with those customers or how you're dealing with clients or internal processes, how long those things are taking, and so on. So getting all those things into a managed area around which has an element of case management and document and, and uh, email management has a huge impact on how well you can see uh, these processes and what the transparency is, and then the onward document management or records management part of that as well. Sorry, Teresa, it's your turn now for sure. Oh, that's quite all right. Well, because I know, Alan, when we were first talking about and, and working on our presentations here, and when I saw your slide where you listed, um, you know, that previous slide where you listed some use cases and some really good examples to put this into context, you know, we knew we wanted to ask the audience members, and so we'd appreciate if everybody would come up to their keyboards um, and answer this question. And, you know, where would you see or you envision the most likely use case for case management in your organization? You do you think having it as that customer constituent service would be a good place for you to put it in uh, for what Alan was describing with legal or with HR or general project management, um, sales, procurement, supply chain type processes? Um, or is there some other way that you think this would be really helpful in your organization? And just uh, curious just to get to the context of just uh, what we're talking about already. appreciate if you just take a moment, answer this question. And if you did tag other, if you would either go into um, either the, um, uh, like the, the, into the Q&A box and just tell us what that other idea is that you have. Um, that, so just because we're going to, just a second here, we're going to um, share with everybody what your thoughts are on this. And it looks like that uh, we're seeing legal coming in at the highest, um, project management, and uh, the customer constituent services. Um, and Alan, is this what you're expecting? Yeah, that, that, being very good common starting point? Yeah, that pretty much reflects what, what we're seeing. Um, I think uh, you know, legal is probably our biggest use case uh, that, that we see. 
But um, I think as well, the other bit that we're seeing is sales, and that comes more from sort of, it's more of a back-end thing integrating with CRM. And I think the, the same is true of things like HR, where there are HR systems, and this is more about back-ending those systems as opposed to things like legal project management, customer uh, service. It's really front-end of that. Um, so I'm not surprised with that, that, uh, that survey. Good places to start. Okay, well, let's uh, keep moving on with our presentation then. And here we see that you know, the mindset of build it and they will use it is misguided. Um, Office 365 is in wide use throughout organizations around the globe, and the benefits reported by AIMS respondents in our research work include being in sync with the wider world and Microsoft's commitment to the Office 365 product line. The challenge businesses face in any organization is typically human and not technology. Users must feel comfortable with it or they'll not use it and adopt it in the way the business is anticipated. In our research, we found that only 21% feel that they have reached the 90 to 100% level of user adoption. There is opportunity in your implementations to engage business users early in the project, learn why this challenge is coming or why this change is coming, and for you to take advantage of what's working well. When technology feels easy to use and intuitive for your staff to understand, user adoption rates will increase significantly and rapidly. And while 21% of organizations feel they are stable and have reached that 90 to 100% user adoption, as seen in the previous slide, the majority, and that's about 44%, report their users like Office 365 once they've made the transition. The big concern is that over 36% are citing no set policies or procedures for managing content. And this indicates an ungoverned environment that places the business at risk of noncompliance and an inability to consistently capture and manage their content assets in a way they are findable. This is where governance and controls around managing your content play an important role in successfully achieving your goals. So don't neglect this important plan. The rise in the number of systems over the past five years, calculated to be 30%, is significant and reflects the recognition and acceptance by businesses that properly managing corporate information assets is an essential requirement. The question is, do they really need to add systems or could they leverage their current investments by expanding the use of what they already have? This growth could be the result of mergers and acquisitions, in which case there should be a plan in place to integrate them into the information ecosystem or even consolidate where possible. Or this could be an indication that these businesses do not have a well-designed framework for evaluating the state, capacity, and functionality of their systems and tend to purchase the next shiny thing that comes along. Alan, what are you seeing with user adoption? Yeah, so I think what, what we're seeing, Teresa, is that um, you know, user adoption from our perspective and the people we're talking to is really about getting people to put content into the right systems and then work on it in that right system as opposed to you know, content, you know, they receive a piece of content, they stick it in a local personal store. And you know, one of the things about Office 365 is the sort of ubiquity of, the growing ubiquity of OneDrive as a personal area to work, but getting people to, to take that content that is really naturally should be put into more of a business context and putting it really putting into the right place as opposed to the wrong place. We you know we see organizations with you know they, they have Office 365 but they also maybe have Dropbox and, and Box and they have previous systems that they can't move because they don't think they've got a way to actually take that use case and put it on the Office 365 in a way that's going to work for them. You know, we, we, we see people, um, you know, adopting Office 365 for Exchange and for the Outlook piece because there's no real adoption required there. It's just, it just works the same way as their, their on-premise things. Um, we see people using it for OneDrive as a personal drive and that's very successful. But what we don't see um, is people you know, organizations getting people able to adopt the systems more so for these collaborative processes. You know, they still tend to 
fall back to email. They, they do some things within collaborative areas, but an awful lot of stuff ends up still within the Outlook environment, within the exchange system. And I think, you know, to make, make, to make it easy for those users to actually get that content into the right place uh, is the key thing that we do from a user adoption perspective. So if I've got an email and it's got an attachment and there's some information in the email that's important, some information in the attachment that's important, and I need to review that email, what do I do? Do I drop that attachment off into a personal space and work on it and then send it out again to, as a personal email to, back to somebody? Or do I immediately file that email to an area that is part of the process and part of the case that I'm working and allow that to be available to the five other people I'm working with and drop the, 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 the attachment into the same structure that's part of the same case so that they can see that and they can see it in its context and so on. You know, making that easy and making it work for users who, you know, in a lot of cases spend vast majority of their time uh, within an Outlook environment has a huge impact on the adoption from the point of view of not necessarily users using all the facilities of the, the Office 365 backend, but from the point of view of getting the content into the right place so that those facilities become useful. And I think that, uh, you know, just taking away the, the barriers of, I've got, a, I've got a, an email here, what do I do with it, other than respond to it or put it into a folder in my local exchange. If you can get past that, which we, you know, that's what we focus on, then all of the users, even the ones that aren't particularly motivated, um, will find that easy and get it done, and therefore, your systems at the back end have the content they should have, and that you can apply the you know the management to that that you want to that you want to apply, and just really getting across the organisation rather than just the highly motivated people who will do the right thing even if it takes 40 clicks. So there's there's a there's a lot of um, things that we see where you know there, there's adoption, but is it adoption in the way that the organisation wants it, or is it adoption from the point of view of yeah I'm using my personal stuff in a different way on the Office 365 platform as opposed to in a way that really helps the organization get control of what they're doing. You know, I think there, there are a few things that are different about, um, you know, Office 365 versus on-premise that lead into some of these things around adoption. You know, there are a lot of platform capabilities that can be used to make life easier for users. You know, workflow, um, you know, and increasingly, Things like uh, you know cognitive services and AI that are becoming available to make you know doing the right thing from a user perspective easier. And again, we exploit that from from what we do. You know, I think within Office 365, there are a lot of opportunities for very quick wins by you know taking on uh, new systems as software as a service, as opposed to having to build out something completely on premise. There's a huge amount of effort put around that. But if you're on the platform, Adding those software as a service type, um, you know, capabilities is is relatively straightforward. There's there's not too much uh, required from IT on that, and and you can very quickly get to a position where you've got a, a working system that's that's easy for the users. Um, I think there's some things on on the side of Office 365 that mean that using software as a service makes way more sense as well. So you really can't do server customization on, particularly on, on SharePoint, on Office 365. A lot of people invested a lot of, mo lot of money over the past 20 years building out customized solutions on SharePoint. Um, those solutions really don't translate onto um, you know, the Office 365 platform, and there needs to be a way to mitigate that. And I think those software as a service type things types of things that we do from a case management perspective to add case management to, to Office 365 makes that less of an issue and takes away 90% of the work that you would need to do if you were starting from scratch. And I think as well, the other thing about, um, about it is you don't need to worry too much about um, you know, how much are we going to need to store here and do I need to plan storage and, and how much compute. All those things are really taken care of. Uh, and taken care of within a cost base that is that is really very very attractive. In that, for most organisations, um, they already have Office 365 licences, and there's built-in capacity there that typically isn't being used. Um, so I think, from a user adoption perspective, um, you know, having systems there that you can put a put something in front of that that users like and are able to get content into 
very quickly you can transition onto this sort of onto the Office 365 platform with a lot of adoption, but not just for um, you know not just for personal storage, but for getting stuff into uh, you know into a, a corporate a records management structure that that you can actually uh, make work as opposed to you know as I say things things being randomly in an exchange and within within personal stores. Okay. Well, back to you, Teresa. Thanks. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more in depth now on the, the case management side of things in here. And just wanted to point out that you know, this chart looks like it looks at the most significant drivers for an organization's digital transformation projects. And yes, the top two responses were uh, cost and productivity and information sharing and collaboration. But the third highest response was for customer service, and that's at 34%. And, and this shows that organizations are very concerned about their client engagement, and using case management is a way to address all of these top concerns. And case management systems go the extra step in providing, as Alan's been saying, this central point of access to all of the information related to, say, you know, your client, your project, or the legal and medical case, just to name a few of the examples. Um, but the point being is that the user has a single point of focus and access to the critical information they need to transact the business. So how does this all relate to Office 365? 74% of those surveyed report that they are using Office 365 for creating content and 59% for collaboration and file sharing. So when we approach this with that case-centric perspective, the process and methodology mimic what many are doing, but in that manual and paper intensive way. Because, you know, as we know, in that manual world, you have your folders of, you know, case files and, and, and physical manila file folders, and those are for your projects and, and the clients and what have you. And all the information is there, readily accessible. And the issues that, that there could be multiple copies and versions of the information, the lack of security and control to keep it from authorized, unauthorized access, the cost to store and manage it, let alone find it and access it all quickly. So in the digital world, this concept remains, but the information is centrally stored with access provided, meaning there's no need to copy. Links to the information ensure that security is maintained, the latest versions are always at hand, there is only one official copy of the record. And so Alan, just want to let you talk a little bit more about how you're helping your customers manage their case-centric information. Thanks, Teresa. Um, you know, I think exploiting share, you know, SharePoint and Office 365 for this, there, there are a host of good reasons to do this um, and a host of reasons why we get people coming to us uh, to, to help them with this. You know, the first one is that the Office 365 as, as a platform, um, you know, it has a huge amount of capability that is really not being exploited currently. Um, you know, there, there are people using um, Office 365 for external collaboration, but it's, you know, I, I see huge opportunities for organizations to exploit that a lot more um, because, A, just about everybody has Office 365. It's almost getting at that ubiquitous thing that I mentioned earlier that email is completely ubiquitous. Office 365 is starting to get to a point where, where it's close enough that people can, you know, most of their activities with external parties could be could be managed in that way, and uh, you know there are reasons for getting stuff onto Office 365 around visibility audit and GDPR and all of those things and applying AI to content that's there. And um, so you know being able to get your case management processes that are to do with emails and document onto Office 365 has a big impact in terms of being able to use all of those things against that content. It also has a big impact in terms of cost um, and productivity. You know, the, the speed with which you can get something up and running on an Office 365 platform, um, you know, from our perspective, getting a case management system up and running is, you know, a few days exercise, um, you know, as opposed to, you know, trying to do this on, on other platforms, which can be fairly torturous. Um, and I think as well, from a point of view of being able to, you know, while you can um, do these things, there are some things that are missing from the out-of-the-box capabilities. Outlook integration is one of those. Now, I think in some of the surveys, the sort of people think the, the email management um, capabilities of Office 365 are, are good. 
Um, I think that's maybe personal email management, but for corporate email management, really, the, you know, and being able to get that, that email into uh, a collaborative space and be able to work on it and use it, it's really fairly poor, and that's where, you know, some of the things that we help those organizations do. Once you've got that done, you know, the, the ability to manage cases and create cases and have metadata around those cases that can allow you to, um, you know, measure what's happening, you know, how long are these cases taking and who's involved and what's the value of them and, and all of those different things, um, you know, means that, you know, you can get these things up and running very, very quickly, very flexible in terms of configuration and being able to exploit that platform. So being able to exploit, for instance, things like Power BI in order to get metrics out of the systems that you're using to service your customers or you're using to service external parties, things like engagement management and, and so on, or the value that uh, is associated with particular legal type activities and, and you know what's the risk around those things. Getting the metrics out of those types of activities and making it work is, is really where we fit. So being able to exploit the platform with relatively small add-on investment in order to get huge value from the point of view of getting that content properly managed and users productive and so on. So there's an example here which is National Grid um, and you, you'll be able to download that uh, case study from, from the, the resources area. But we have other people like Eversheds, uh, Sutherland, who quote us, you know, legal workers who are saving an hour a day in terms of their just getting things done because their work is case centric and we provided them something that really uh, helps them with the case centricity of what they're doing. An hour a day for a legal worker probably means the return investment is one day, that sort of thing. So, you know, I think there is a huge opportunity for organizations to, to leverage Office 365 for this sort of thing. It does require some add-ons um, and that's that's where we where we work um, you know I think as well the you know the overall uh, you have existing you probably have existing office 365 um, uh, in fact this is Teresa's slide isn't it I'm back uh, to you yeah, Teresa, but it's we're making the same points here, so, um, yeah. and I was going to say, you know, look for opportunities, look for these case-centric opportunities on where this could work in your organization. I think that's, if you start just looking at your business a little differently, we always need to, you know, put on, uh, you know, look at things with this fresh perspective, and I think that if you take this case-centric approach, uh, um, it'll improve not only your operations, but also your customer service. And we know how important that is. And when I say customers, I do mean your constituents, partners, you know, whoever it is that you need to engage with outside of your organization in running your business. Um, so do consider this case management approach. And just something else I just wanted to put in here is, is that you know, if you're unsure where else, on where to begin, how to begin, um, so I suggest seek professional assistance or training and to help you determine the right, what's the right path for your organization. Look to current service providers for guidance. There's a lot of really good resources out there. And turn to professional associations and your peers for finding this advice and training. And, and also to look for those best practices. Because you know, it, it really is important to take a step forward and learn than it is to take no steps at all. And um, so, Alan, I know that on the next slide that, we, that you do have a few more resources available um, on the kinds of guidance that you and your team can offer. Yeah, you know, we have a, a white paper around why why use Office 365 for these types of activities, and I think that's a, a worthwhile read. Um, and I think you know, organizations are looking to get more value out of the Office 365 investments. This is one way to do that um, and do it in spades. I believe um, there obviously are a lot of things that you can do in Office 365. This is a what I would term a very quick win that services a lot of different, uh, you know, departments within an organization or corporate requirements because we are seeing, you know, big organizations using using the products in order to, to do things across their organization to get their document management that is sort of focused on particular types of activities under control. And, uh, you know, we think that that's a, a very worthwhile thing to do given the, you know, the regulatory and the, you know, the compliance scene at the moment, getting information properly filed has a huge impact on what you can do in terms of proving compliance and, and actually achieving compliance. Okay. Um, well, I know we have a few questions that have, that have been coming in while we were talking here. And Alan, I just want to 
have us take a couple of these questions here. Um, and someone's asking specifically about, because um, we talked a lot you know, with the email and the document-centric side, uh, the document management side, pulling this into the case. What other kinds of applications can work well and integrate with this? Yeah, so I think you know the you know you can drive these types of processes from you know your corporate system. So good examples are CRM. You know when you create a something within CRM, and CRM is used for all sorts of things, not just CRM. And you know with particularly with Microsoft and the Dynamics product, it's more XRM. So whatever you want to manage from a structured basis, you know being able to drive new cases out of those those systems. So if I have a new a new customer or a new, I have a new support case, being able to, to create the, you know, the case structures from a, you know, the, the unstructured content point of view. So being able to associate content like emails and documents with something within those types of, those types of environments, you know, the HR system, I'm creating a new disciplinary case. Where do I store those documents? There's a bunch of emails that's associated with that. How do I get that? And make sure that those things are tied together in a way that, that means I can manage that properly. So we see, we see a lot of people, we've seen people drive that from CRM and in the legal industry from practice management and from, you know, systems that, that check out, you know, conflicts of interest and, and so on. So we, we see it from, you know, the, the internal business systems driving things where there is anything that's going to be, um, you know, associated with a particular activity or a particular thing that's being done. Um, it fits in all of those things as one platform that can do that across a whole raft of different back ends and, and uh, departments. One, another question that's come in here, and um, in, in talking about getting this type of, of a project off the ground, you know, say someone is ready to put, um, do all of this for, for bringing these systems together, putting this case-centric approach to how they do their work, what would be involved in getting this kind of system off the ground? Um, what kind of... Uh, yeah, so, so it, it depends. Decide? I mean, yeah. Um, so it, it depends. I mean, there... We, we, for instance, um, you know, our, our most, uh, and I mentioned earlier, our, our most common case is, you know, the legal department within an organization. You know, from we have templates that will sit on top of our core underlying platform to make, you know, the, the general case management very specific for legal departments and that, you know, the commonality of requirement is pretty high there. So we're probably at a 95% of what customers need is there available in terms of initial installation of the, the underlying platform and the template. Um, in, other, or in other things, it's maybe as much as 15 to 20% needs to be adjusted, but it tends to be in that sort of 5 to 20% adjustment rather than starting from scratch. And even starting from scratch with the, you know, with the underlying platform, it's way ahead of starting from having just a, a SharePoint system, which is you know, it, it's, there's a huge amount of work that you would need to do. It's hugely expensive to do that sort of development, and uh, it's also difficult to maintain because people move around. So I think having having something that's very flexible from a point of view of it has all the things that typically you're going to need in a case management, uh, you know, system uh, that can be configured as opposed to, you know, develop from scratch. It makes a huge difference. I would say shortens projects by 95% overall in terms of getting something up and running. Good, good, that's helpful. Um, you've been talking a lot about the, um, the legal community in, in where this is a very helpful type of, of tool to have in the organization. What other kind of industries are, um, are, are your client base? Uh, with some other, some other uh, types of industries um, to where? Yeah, so I think, you know, we, we sort of wrap in we wrap in legal with professional services, so you know we service some of the big four. Um, we also have you know things like real estate organizations who need to you know it's it's all sort of customer management and, and then project management. Um, we also have people using the products for you know in construction for managing site uh, information. Uh, we have people using it for things like um, you know managing. Uh, shipments where there, where it's sort of huge amounts of documentation around large shipments that are sort of 
repeating on a weekly basis, those sorts of things. So, you know, we, we, we see it across all industries, um, particularly in, you know, vertical or rather departmental level with things like legal, but also in the legal industry across large legal, you know, legal firms. Mm-hmm. Um, and professional services, it's really every professional services organization has this requirement. You mentioned the construction industry. Uh, I would think that would have a very large mobile component for being out in the field. Um, how does that work yeah. integrate in? Yeah, so, so mobile, mobile obviously is becoming more and more and more important for, for organizations, you know, being able to access the content, but also being able to do things like, I've got an email here, it's an important email, you know, in the moment, get that file to the right place. And so we have, we have a, a mobile client that allows people to go and navigate case structures and to access the content associated with those case structures in a case-centric way. And we also have um, a mobile filing capability, which allows um, you know users on a you know on Outlook on on a, a, an iPhone or an Android phone to be able to file that information straight away, and give them easy ways to do that, as opposed to waiting to get back to the office and then forgetting about it. So we we have those capabilities. Um, so from a mobile perspective, you know, being able to do that case things related to case management works extremely well. There's another question here I'm going to squeeze in real quickly. Um, if someone's asking, would it be easier to say that this case-centric approach is best for systems where there is a commonality in functional requirements? Um, yeah, so I think, you know, I think case management is that, you know, our, our inspiration for the, the products that we now have in this area came from three of our early customers. Um, one was uh, a, an oil company, um, Premier Oil, who, who had built out on SharePoint a, a, a legal uh, matter management solution and added our to a client to make that work. Um, we then had a, a real estate organization who had got a partner to build them a an, an, you know, customer management solution um, and uh, used our to client to make the, the email part of that work. And then KPMG in Germany, similarly, they had built out an entire engagement management, huge project to, to, to generate engagement management on SharePoint. Um, and uh, we looked at these three things, and they were all functionally the same. They had different terminology. They had different hierarchical structures. But in terms of the functionality it was required, it was virtually identical. So we believe that there is a, a, a level of this um, and you know, I mentioned earlier about templates. So we have an underlying level of functionality that meets pretty much all the case management needs around, um, you know, things that are document email centric. And then there's a, you know, a, a, a specific configuration part, which is, you know, quite thin, um, which then turns it from a, an engagement management system to a legal matter management system. So I think yes, that is, I suppose the short answer is yes. And I've probably just described uh, how we how we've sort of executed on on that answer. It's fascinating. I thank you for sharing that. Um, I know Mandy uh, wants to come back in here and talk a little bit more about um, some other things that are going on at AIM right now. Mandy. Hi, thank you. Yes, thank you, Teresa. Um, yeah, I'd just like to talk a little bit about AIM training. Um, AIM offers live um, instructor-led training as well as online and self-paced classes. You can thoroughly immerse yourself uh, with a deep dive course or dip into a topic with our quick study offerings. We can even um, arrange for a trainer to come to your place of business and provide a custom perspective uh, to our instructor-led programs. Info on all of that can be found at uh, aimtraining forward slash, uh, sorry, aim.org forward slash training. Um, as we come to um, the end of our webinar time, um, let me remind you that we have recorded the webinar and it will be available um, in the next day or two at aim.org's resources webinar page. Um, and don't forget to download the resources and take the survey. We value your feedback and would like to hear from you. And thank you to our underwriter, RepStore. Without support from our solution providers, we wouldn't be able to bring you these free educational programs like our webinars. So, so thank you, RepStore, for your sponsorship. As we bring the webinar to a close, I want to leave you with our speaker's closing thoughts or key takeaways from today's discussion. Teresa, your closing thoughts, please. Uh, thanks, Mandy. 
Um, we've talked a lot about email and document management and thinking about how using a case management approach can be very beneficial to your organization. But as you embark on these and, and other new projects, just remember to keep in mind your data and information governance. Spend a healthy portion of your planning efforts into what you want your processes to look like and how you'll go about managing them. Think holistically, and when you do, integrating this case-centric approach into your work will reap great rewards. And so, Alan McMillan of RepStore, your closing thoughts. Yeah, thanks, Teresa. You know, I think uh, you know, I think there's an opportunity for just about every organization um, around Office 365 to you know to reduce the number of systems that they have and to make them more consistent and to you know improve productivity. I think the danger is that um, you know in doing that, they, you know, or it, you go down a route of developing something specifically to do every single different thing, and I think looking for things that can that can do co the common pieces really well, um, and I think that's where we fit. I think that is a good approach. You know, there are lots of software as a service type offerings out there that can really shortcut the road from starting to getting some return on investment and also value and the effectiveness of the, the solution. So I just encourage you to, when you're looking at these things to, to take into consideration um, you know, doing these things with, with the ecosystem as opposed to trying to build them in-house because that sometimes is a road to pain um, and a road to very high cost. So uh, I'd encourage you to do that. Thanks. Lovely. That's some great thoughts and takeaways there. Um, thank you, everyone, um, for your time today, and we greatly appreciate that. Um, for AIM, this is Amanda Goff. See you next time.